Hello, this is Petra Lewis back with Ultrasound 101 and in this section we're going to talk about ultrasound technique. Here are some real basics about the technique of scanning the patients. First of all, you need to hold the transducer in the appropriate way. Uh, shown here are all ways that you should not hold the transducer. And here is the correct way to hold the transducer. And we call this a C grip. So the transducer is firmly held within the C of the thumb and the first finger. And you want to not turn that probe within your hand. You want to turn your hand and wrist, not to turn the probe within it. You're going to get your orientation upside down. All probes, I'll show you in a minute, have some type of a marker on them. Um, either a line or a little light, which, tell, which is the indicator point. And that marker should be um, within your hand, face towards the patient's um, top or head, or the right side of the patient, depending on whether you're doing longitudinal or transverse scanning. So here's an example on this particular probe of the orientation marker. This one has a little um, horizontal and vertical line. Some of them have vertical lines. Some of them have a little light or a little blippy button thing there and that marker will equate to a marker on the screen so up in this particular patient this particular machine you're going to have this position of this marker will correspond to this point on the screen the orientation marker varies between different um, software manufacturers so you need to look on your particular machine but it should be on the left hand side of the screen for all standard applications and procedures to save confusion if it's on the right um, it means your left and rights may end up being mixed up the standard orientation for ultrasound images for transaxial is the right side of the patient is the left side of the image so this is the liver, so this is the right side of the patient. And in this particular patient, you can see that the, uh, there's a slightly different orientation marker here. It's a little P for this one. For longitudinal sagittal images, the head of the patient is the left side of the image. So again, we can see the liver here, kidney here, longitudinally. This is the foot of the patient, so it's on the right side of the image. The head of the patient's on the left side of the image. The transaxial orientation on ultrasound is the same as you're seeing on a CT scan. So that will help you if you're used to looking at CT scans. Ultrasound gel improves the transmission of the sound into the patient because ultrasound beam does not travel well through air. So there's no such thing as too much ultrasound gel. Be very liberal with it. Your imaging quality will be much better. If you're using a sheath, you have to have gel inside the sheath as well as outside of the sheath. And most places have gel warmers, which are nice for the patient. Some imaging can be done with a patient just lying supine. You don't have to worry about uh, positioning issues. But in most patients, the imaging you obtain will be much improved by varying the patient's um, position and also other maneuvers. So having the patient take a deep breath in and hold it is going to bring the liver and the kidneys down below um, the level of the rib cage and enable you to see them much better. Don't forget to tell them to breathe again. I usually forget that. Rolling them onto their left side is a good place for visualizing the gallbladder and the right kidney. And moving them onto the rolling them on their right side can really help you image the left kidney. Now, unlike CT, where image acquisition is in a fixed plane, although it can be reconstructed in different planes, ultrasound images can be obtained in an infinite variety of different planes. But there are some motions which we commonly use, and these are just shown here. So you can slide the transducer up and down. The patient's bottom body or extremity is shown here. You can angle it up and down, so you're moving the beam that way. So for example, you might angle it up to look up to the dome of the liver or look up into the heart from under the sternum um, or angle it down towards the feet. Compression is really, really important, um, both in terms of obtaining good images and seeing if structures are compressible. For example, if you're looking at the appendix and trying to see if it's normal or not, you're going to push that transducer down a little bit to see if it's compressible. You can rock the transducer from side to side. So 
by moving it from side to side will allow you to see the left lobe of the liver and then rotate to the other side to see the right lobe of the liver. And then finally, you can rotate it and rotating is going to take you from more transverse planes to more longitudinal planes. Remembering we describe those planes relative to the organ and that's not always completely parallel to the patient's longitudinal axis. And then finally, just some basics on how to improve your image quality. So first of all, as I said, there's no such thing as too much ultrasound gel, put more on. Um, most um, uh, providers, when they start doing ultrasound, do not push anywhere near hard enough. If you see the ultrasound technologist scanning, they're really, you know, pushing really significantly hard is why they get a lot of repetitive stress images. And particularly in larger patients, this is going to be important. You want to avoid trying to scan through air or bone because the ultrasound beam is not going to go through those. So you may have to maneuver to be between the ribs to see part of the liver, for example, or uh, rolling the patient to avoid big uh, gas bubbles. Um, using those clues, I said, with positioning and holding their breath on full inspiration I talked about before. And then finally taking advantage of acoustic windows. And acoustic windows uh, mean that you're trying to go through something that allows the ultrasound beam to go through well to look at something behind it. So we may look through the bladder to look at the uterus or the ovaries. We may use the liver to look at the kidney. Um, and then looking through the intercostal spaces is going to be much more effective than trying to look through a rib. And that's the end of this section.